All right, welcome back, everybody. Sorry, my internet sucks. Uh, changed off bedroom. Also, probably cost this a little bit. So we are back. Uh, uh, Yudi, before were... you go forward, one quick suggestion. Why don't, why don't you hardwire yourself? Yeah, I. I mean, the wire is in another. I mean, the modem is in another bedroom. So I. That's the plan that that's, I that's need to bring, bring the modem here and then connect it. Yeah, so the, yeah. that's cable it. That will be a lot more, lot more stable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even, even Comcast cannot screw that up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't trust them. We, I don't. I, have, I really want. We had fiber. Verizon and Comcast really both. The, the fiber, the one. Yeah. I mean, but we at don't home have I have, uh, I have fiber. Yeah. Mm. So the fiber does we have good. right now. At home, I have fiber. In the office, we have, we had dual connectivity, but we got rid because nobody comes to the office anymore. Everybody's working from home. Yeah. Plus, Comcast gave us so much trouble. Finally, we just we had Comcast business as well as Verizon business. Mm. So Verizon has fiber there, so we got rid of Comcast. Comcast, I think at least thirty percent of the times there was some problem or another. I am facing the same thing, so. Okay, uh, I don't know if we have people here or not, but I see some questions, so let's go. Uh, question is, if my I-140 is approved for EB2, EB3, and then I plan to move outside of USA for a year, come back on L1, can I use my EB2, EB3 priority date when I apply to EB1C via I L1? Wow. Yes, next question. <laughs> You probably spend so much time writing that question than your answer. <laughs> this needs an answer, right? You can use the priority dates can be transferred without any problem across one, two, and three categories. So if you have an approval under two, you can take it to three, three to two, two to one, three to one, one to three, whatever you want. Hmm. Whatever your little heart desires. Okay. Um, next question is: Are there disadvantages of uh, for concurrent filing of I one hundred and forty and I four hundred and eighty five? No. Next question. <laughs> Love it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Does NIOS twelve subject marks matter when applying for university? Okay. This. Sorry, I, I didn't read the full thing. No idea what that means. <laughs> When somebody uh, says N I, my first thought is nickel, because that's the chemical symbol, and I'm thinking nickel oxygen sulfide. First, I thought that it's like N I, like a national interest waiver or N I V, N I E. I was like, but then I didn't read the full thing. Okay, uh, are there any visa stamps visas for startups in USA? Well, actually, we were not paying much attention to that. Okay, until last week when in discussion with a client we realized he actually could do well under this category of international entrepreneur entrepreneurial parole iep so what is that if you meet certain criteria you get to come and live in the united states and expand your business for two and a half years and then you can get an extension for another two and a half years. But there are some requirements. How much capital you must have raised, where the capital should be coming from. It's definitely not a million dollars, a lot less than that. Mm -hmm. But it does require that you, you have raised some capital. I don't remember the figures off the top of my head. We just finished doing the paperwork, sending it out to the client for one of these cases. So IEP can actually work for some very specific cases where you have the funding already identified and raised. But what, what is the visa category? International Entrepreneurial Parole. That's what it's called, IEP. Okay. IEP, okay. And how long is that? Well, we don't have any experience with that. It's been used very sparingly mm -hmm. um, because it has very <clears throat> limited and narrow circumstances in which yeah. you would use it. 
But mm-hmm. I would say maybe six months, six to eight months, maybe at the most. Mm-hmm. So I don't think you can do any premium processing in it, but who knows? It's difficult for me. Normally, there is actually a limit. The, the investment must have been raised, I think, within 18 months before you file the application. So obviously, they, they hopefully, they don't want the case to get stale. Uh, it's kind of a lame way for me to try to correlate. Yeah, but OK, the bottom line is I'm hoping they'll move faster than they normally do, because investment-based cases require immediate presence. Mm, OK. There are some good questions. Um, I'm on H-1B visa and my wife is in the US. Uh, my green card process has not started yet, means I don't have an approved I-140 yet. Can my wife still get work authorization and get a no. job? Next. <laughs> no. Part of a new EAD change. The only okay. way you can get an H-4 EAD is if the main person, husband or wife, has an I-140 approved or has an extension beyond six years approved. That's the law. Okay. Any problem doing crypto investments under H1 or H4 visas? Who knows? I personally think if it is more like investing in stocks and you're not churning your investment every day or too short, too like soon. Day, daily trading, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like day trading. I think it should be okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, next one is while doing job on F1 visa or H1B visa, can I play international chess tournaments in USA representing India? Also, yes. can I play ever while doing job as an immigrant? Yes. If you're not getting paid for it, you can play chess, you can play Ludo, you can play snakes and ladders, whatever. But you're representing another country, you being in represent. this country. That's, okay. that's not, you're not betraying America by representing your own country, which is India. Right, okay. Wow, that's, it, it's very interesting. But what, like, what if uh, is the, let's say he's, that is a competition and he has a, is a winner prize, like maybe $1,000, $10,000. Is that considered as an income or is that? I think that's a relatively small amount. Mm. And I don't think it can be called, it cannot be called. Like an active income. It's not work because he didn't earn it doing something useful with his life. No, no. Let me take that (laughs) back. (laughs) This wasn't bargained for. The closest example I can give you is a case where This young lady went to work for the New York Giants, I think, a few years ago. Mm. It was an F1 visa. And she was just volunteering. But they liked her so much, they gave her the season's tickets, which is thousands of dollars. Mm. They gave her the season's passes. And look at USCI. There's nothing better to do. They went after this young lady and said, wow, you violated your status. Mm. And... Power to her, she took it all the way to court and the court said nonsense. She never bargained for this. She never wanted it. It's a gift. Mm. Mm. So if I, if I say, Yudi, I'll do your program, but you've got to pay my regular hourly rates, that's work. But if we just are talking and one day you just say, Rajiv, you're old. Let me give you $10,000. That's not really something I bargained for. You gave it all to right. me as a gift. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, By the way, I'm okay with that if you if you decide to do that. <laughs> I'm okay too. I mean, you you are a U.S. <laughs> citizen, so I'm not a citizen yet. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> the question was for someone who's on visa or non-immigrant status. So, <laughs> okay, uh, can we do internships from India remotely while on F1 visa in USA? Okay. You see, there are two different parts to this question. First of all, if you are not expecting to comply with the terms of OPT, what you do sitting in India is your business as long as it is not prohibited work. For example, dealing with restricted technologies. Okay? Like, um, what is it, 128? Yeah, yeah. So military military military-grade software. As long as you're not doing something silly like that, 
what you do sitting in india is your business nobody can stop you from doing it mm. but he's not sitting in, in in india right he's sitting in usa working for a company which is in in india but remotely okay. sitting i i think that should be okay but i would check with my dso i'll tell you why because dso's can be weird schools have their own internal policies about how many hours they let you work okay i don't think okay. uscis could stop you but i think your dso might have something to say about it mm. okay but if you were sitting in india what you did was your business yeah okay is there any bill in progress proposed which will grant ead to h4 spouses without having h1b guy approved i140 no such bill okay uh, next one is i have 2 years left 4 uh, month max out uh, my i140 got recently approved with uh, my company and got an opportunity in company b uh, and they will transfer my approved i140 and they will get 3 year extension any issues if my company revokes i140 well there a lot there's a lot of information that is incorrectly stated but i don't know how much of that is just misunderstanding of the law let me tell you what the law is and then you can decide talk to your lawyers about it mm. if your i140 is approved and it stays approved for 180 days mm. at least one day out of which falls on or after january 17th 2017 no one can take away your right for h1b extension even with a different employer even if after the 180 days the i140 is revoked mm. two exceptions exception number 1 if uscis revokes the i140 for material error, material error fraud or misrepresentation number 2 if your priority dates are current and you have not filed a 485 you could be asked to justify why are you asking for h1 extension why don't you file 485 hmm. Hmm. and the first one where uscis revokes is it just the random audit that they are like already approved and they're like oh i have some free time i'm going to go check this guy's case working of the uscis and quantum physics nobody quite understand <laughs> <laughs> okay got it <laughs> all right uh, next one is my stepfather's name is is on all my document and education document but my biological father's name is on birth certificate will this be problem uh, no at the time of no. green card i'm yet to come no. to usa on f1 visa you'll be all right don't worry you can explain this Okay. All right. Uh, next one is please uh, ask about getting green card through PhD uh, because EB1 date is current according to November visa bulletin. How right. much good pap- paper one should be should publish to get EB1A or EB1B? We have a presentation on this that I think UD has a link to that. Yeah. You can uh, also send me an email if you want help at immigration.com help at immigration.com i will be happy to share the presentation with you hmm. merely having a phd is not enough there are two categories eb1b eb1a eb1b requires you to have a professorial or research job both faculty positions permanent jobs and of course the definition of permanent for research is different that means as long as they have funding they'll have a job for you and eb1a is reserved for the top 10% people in the profession nationally mm. phd has little to do it do with it but phd is often a, a a characteristics of people who succeed but it's not a prerequisite you mm. could even not have a degree and still succeed okay i was just pinning, pinning our um, eb1a uh, presentation yeah so. okay next one is uh, if i marry my h1b 
girlfriend while on F1 visa, how instantly I will be able to convert into H4 visa? Um, you can fly out to the out of the United States, get an H4 visa stamp, and come right back. So is that the right thing? I mean, why would you want to convert onto H4 though? The second thing you can do is just apply for a change of status within the United States. That takes eight, 10 months. Is it the right thing to do? Probably not, unless you can get employment authorization. But I like F1 better because it gives you OPT. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Unless that H1B girlfriend is already, you know, her company's applying for green card and maybe, I, I don't know, we don't know the details. So. Okay, next one is uh, I got 221G. How much time does it take for them to issue the visa? I, I have a client sitting in India for two years now on 221G. Wow. We actually sued the government and we, we lost the case. Only one case out of 15 cases we filed in 12 months that we lost. But I knew going in that we were going to lose it. Government has too many consulates. You cannot push much. They have too many ways to get, get out of it. Okay. Okay. Um, ooh, uh, I'm going, I'm planning to register for lottery H1B for, from two different employers, one my employer and one from consultant. Is this legal to do? As long as the two employers are not related in any way, no common management, no common projects, and the job for which you're being hired is not common to both. You should be okay, but double check this with your lawyers because this can trip you up. And if, you, if, if they think you are applying or you're double dealing, they will cancel both H1B. Oh, so, so, but it is okay if there were two companies. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah so if, if our law firm and your employer company filed an H1 for the same person, perfectly okay. Mm, okay. All right, uh, is there any way to expedite, expedite uh, F2A visa application? Uh, I applied on June 1, 2020 oh. for my spouse. Family-based? No. No. Okay. <coughs> <clears throat> my passport and every other government ID in India has only my first name. Will this be a problem in US? A lot America? of people, they do that, they, they put, uh, LNU last name unknown, unknown on your on your immigration paperwork. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next one is different between oh difference between seven nine seven A and seven nine seven B H one B filing. Beats the heck out of me. I don't remember the difference. <laughs> Our team would know. I think one is an approval with the I-94, the other one is an approval without the I-94. Mm. I could be wrong. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, oh, that guy came back about the I-140 revoking. My max out is in two years and I just got I-140. Uh, so what happened if company B in my current within 180 days uh, i guess it's the same question okay yeah uh all right next one is i got my l1b visa last month from santiago uh, chile m chile. oh nice i'm moving to next month and i'm not an indian citizen uh, if my employer file a green car how much time i can get my i-140 approved Oh, I-140 is the same no matter which country you were born in. If you are applying through PERM, labor certification process, it all depends upon what kind of problems you get stuck with. So at optimistically from the day you start your process with your lawyers and they work fast, it could take anywhere from a year to a year and a half, ideally, to get I-140 approved. But if you get stuck into their audits and then supervised recruitment, it can take longer, which is rare. Mm -hmm. 
how can I bring my wife uh, to USA if I am on F1 visa? On F2 visa. Earning from YouTube while studying in United States, does it come under part-time work and does it affect my student visa status? Probably a violation of your student visa status, but I don't know for sure. No. Uh, okay, and next one is after doing, I'm gonna skip that. Current employer has submitted POM application India uh, and confirmed priority date. However, the response can take around three to six months and looking to switch before that. Should I wait or just switch? Don't, don't switch. Because if you leave before I-140 approval, you get nothing. Now, if the job is giving you $30,000 more, then okay, then you lose the time that you've spent waiting so far. I would take that money. But if not, I would wait until the I-140 approval. It has, mm -hmm. it gives you a lot more protection. Okay. Um, my wife, okay, so same person is asking question. My wife is uh, currently on H4 visa. I am planning to apply her H1B visa. If her H1B not picked up in lottery while she still have H4, and if her, while well, she, Will she still have her H-4 visa? Yeah, yeah. Denial of an H-1B or failure to be selected does not interfere with your current status, H-4, F-1, any status. And the following question was, if H-1B is approved, how can she change from H-4 to H-1? Yeah, so what you do normally is, when you apply for an H-1B, you've gone through the lottery, you won, and now you apply for your H-1B you will apply for a change of status from H4 to H1B. That will become effective if approved from October 1st. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, could you please ask about EB5 as well for Indians, sure. especially this year regional center is stopped. So how much money would one invest and is this viable options for Indians? Oh, we are doing them. Uh, the only problem is we don't know what's going to happen to the case that is currently pending in appeal. So the government lost the case. The investment amounts went back to half a million and a million instead of being 800 or 900 and 1.8 is the word is, something like that. Mm. So the investment amounts went back. But the problem is if the government wins the case, how about all those people who have now invested half a million dollars or a million dollars? What do they do with those cases? Are they going to revert back and say, no, no, you have to file again with higher investment amounts? We don't know. So as long as you are willing to accept that risk, I think it's a small amount of risk. I think courts will provide for something like saying that appeal, the decision of the appeal will be made pro pro prospective rather than retroactive. Although I don't know if the courts can do that. I think courts can do a lot. They can always fashion equitable relief. So I think there is some risk that you might have to reinvest. As long as you're comfortable with that, by all means, invest now. Hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> next one is, uh, there are a lot of questions now. Um, I am moving next month to USA, I have a job in California. Can I move to New York and work from there until it is remote or it will be problem someday in extension? You can only work in the approved locations. So your H1B will have certain locations approved. You can only work in that location or within normal commuting distance which is considered to be about 50 miles. 50 miles. Yeah. But California and New York is a little bit more than 50 miles. Hmm. So they'll have to file an H-1B <laughs> amendment. Sorry, I, I didn't catch it on your joke. Takes, you, <laughs> takes a little time. Uh, okay. And so, so if he does want to, if the location is specified to California and he wants to move to New York, uh, then he has to file an amendment that he's going to be working from New York. 
Yes. By the way, will there be problem you, in approval? No, no. It shouldn't be. I mean, if his case is clear cut, amendments yeah. are relatively straightforward. But I had a friend visiting from yeah. New York the other day, and um, there were three of them actually, and I got them tres leches cake, which is probably one of the best cakes you ever tasted. Mm. Okay. So she ate hers, she ate her husband's, <laughs> and she ate half of mine. <laughs> and, and then she goes, oh, I have to go for a walk. I've got to work this out. <laughs> I said, unless you are walking all the way to Manhattan, you are not working this off just by walking. <laughs> Because yeah. like 18,000 calories, my friend. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. A uh, few pounds already. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Um, so that question is back. Uh, where, uh, person X worked for an Indian company as MD till 2017, later working for US company A as management analyst on H1B. And now... Company A and Indian company uh, have a joint investment company, which is a company B. Can company B sponsor EB1C for that person if the current job role is not related to that project? Okay. So you have three issues and all three of them have solutions that may or may not be possible. First of all, you must have one year experience out of the last three as an executive or a managerial level employee outside US. You're already past three years. So there's an exception for that if you are working for the same group of companies. Hmm. Okay. Now, so the first issue is, are you working for the same group of companies? Are they related by equity rather than just having a joint venture in one project? So just because you have a joint venture in one project doesn't make the two companies related, okay? So let's say the companies are related. Let's say that you were working as a manager in India. Now you are working as an analyst. That shouldn't make a difference. There's mm -hmm. no law that says you got to continue working as a man. But the law does require a continuity of work in the same group of companies. And then instead of counting one year out of the last three, we count one year out of the last three before you entered the United States. That would make you eligible to file an EB once. Worth investigating, looks doubtful. Hmm. Okay. Um, there was a good question. I lost it, but I think I remember the question. The question was, uh, can you can you participate in bug bounty program uh, while on a F1 visa, but you're not taking any money. You're just taking a certificate of appreciation. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. These are co-curricular activities. Yeah. Yeah. But people do make a lot of money out of bug bounty. It's like Well, if if you're not getting paid, if you're just getting a kiss on the cheek, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm just I'm just saying like if you find any bug, uh, you can report it and you can get paid for it. <clears throat> Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I just don't have yeah. the time to uh, Yudi, I would like to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, next one is, uh, I'm just choosing good ones uh, now because there's a lot of fun. I'm a UK born Indian citizen, uh, got my H1B approved. Then will my green card process be faster since I was born in UK? Yes. Oh, it is the country is of the birth that birth, matters, right. the country yeah. of citizenship. Okay, yes, okay. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Okay, um, I got a H-1B visa with one year validity for visa renew. Do I need to come back to my home country? I, I, I lost that question. I got H-1B visa with one year validity uh, for visa renewal. Do I need to go come back? I mean, go back to home No, no, country? You, can, you can go to any country as long as the consulates there are taking cases from third countries. So this is called TCN, third country national processing. Uh, you can actually go to immigration.com and read our frequently asked questions on immigration.com. 
um, much of many must a lot of information is on my LinkedIn page as well. So if you go to LinkedIn and uh, look there, a lot of information is there. I don't know if this question has been answered, but last check I had about 53 articles there also. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, have an, I have my uncle in USA. I'm 23 year old. Can he make me permanent residence through adoption? Will the age oh. matter for that? I don't think US laws allow, um, I think the age of adoption is 14. It's definitely not 23. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, next one is, my parents are retired. Will this affect my F1 visa interview? I, they sh it shouldn't. Yeah. All right, uh, wow. We have people from different countries. I'm Saudi Arabia born uh, and processing to apply for a green card. Is that faster? Yes, you are, you are a smart man. You got born in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> can help it. Don't get born in India. It takes too long. <laughs> Smart man. As if he, he he chose that decision that I want to be born in this country. All right. Uh, my son is born in Singapore, uh, but with an Indian passport. Will he have advantage in green card application? I believe so. I think the only exception is if you were working for the consulate, Indian consulate, there's some exception there. Otherwise, let's say you were traveling through Singapore, baby's mom was pregnant and just by happenstance, while the plane was landed in Singapore, she gave birth in Singapore. That child is a Singaporean um, uh, as far as we are concerned for immigration. Singapore may not expect, accept him as a citizen. That doesn't matter. But for immigration law, we will charge him to Singapore, not to India. Because you're looking for birth of country. Yeah. Date of date of uh, the country of birth. Yeah. Not birth of country. <laughs> country of birth, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, but does countries allow like to to let you like travel just <laughs> what, one are, month what are they gonna <laughs> you need, I mean, what are they gonna say? Hold the baby in. You can't give birth here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know, but but I'm saying like if some countries, some countries don't. So in USA, the rule is so, so, even so, if yeah, you... like let's say if my my friend's uh, wife is pregnant and like uh, is she knows that she's gonna uh, has a baby in one month, uh, can she like come to USA get her child U.S. citizen? Is that possible? Yes, yes, she can. I think there was some wow. change. In... There was some change made that if the counselor officer who interview, interviews you for the visa suspects that you're coming just to give birth here, they could deny you the visa. I think that's the only change they made. Otherwise, I think even if you are showing and you're pregnant, you can enter the United States. I don't see any reason you cannot. But if someone has a tourist visa already, uh, they are not gonna go to- They probably to can come. As far as I know, double check that. Wow. But I'm pretty sure there's and no that, law that, that was just for me understanding. I was like, that's interesting that, like, I mean, people can just do that then. <laughs> yes, sir. They can. Uh, um, okay. Next one is uh, I'm on H4 visa and currently in United States. Can I work for an Indian company while staying in USA, get a salary in Indian account? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know the answer to that question. My inclination would be to say, be conservative, don't do it. This could be considered to be unauthorized employment, but I have no way of knowing for sure because USCIS has never really definitively spoken on this issue. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, we'll take one last question and then we'll wrap up. Uh, let's see if there's anything emergency coming on. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, if one adopts a US born child, can he get a green card? Hmm. So let's say that you adopted a child and the adoption was legal under the US laws. I don't think there should be a difference between an adoptive parent and a biological parent. My answer would be yes. 
such a child should be able to sponsor, but don't go around adopting children without double checking this, <laughs> but just knowing the laws I do, I'm pretty sure that child, when they turn 21, should be able to sponsor you for green card. Oh, so yeah, so they not have right to now. Wait, uh, otherwise we would years. have babies adopted all the time. <laughs> okay, that that was good. that was good. Uh, all right, uh, one last question because I see they said it's emergency. Um, well, I guess can a junior role person in India be filed for L one A visa and and no, no okay. don't go further. Okay. <laughs> it is an okay. executive or managerial level visa. Yeah, yeah, cool. I think then we will wrap it up here. Uh, again, next week uh, or next to next week when we meet next time, it's going to be different time. It's going to be twelve uh, p.m. California time, three p.m. Eastern time, and one thirty a.m. Indian time. If you're joining from India, I'll post it on stories as well. So thank you, Rajiv T. We'll talk soon. <clears throat> Sounds good. Okay. Take care, everyone, guys. Be well.